Targeting plastic. More than 40 companies in the UK have pledged to cut their plastic pollution in the next seven years. The agreement is a first and others are expected to follow. So is this a turning point in the battle to eliminate plastic waste? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Jane Dutton. If the current trend of pollution continues, scientists predict by the year 2015 there could be more plastic in our oceans than fish. Now, that's an extraordinary prediction. Now, more than 40 large companies in the UK have signed up to an agreement. The aim to eliminate single plastic use or packaging that cannot be reused. The goal to do it in the next seven years. The move is a first and the decision is expected to be followed by companies in other countries. Now, a million plastic bottles are purchased every minute in the United States alone and approximately 500 million straws are used and discarded in that country every day. For coffee lovers in Britain, perhaps this figure will give you the kind of jolt that coffee won't even. 2.5 billion disposable coffee cups are used each year. We have a lot to get to with our guests, but first, Charlie Angela has more on the UK company's decision to cut their plastic waste. We're outside Tesco's, one of 42 British companies and supermarkets that have signed up to the UK Plastics Pact. Voluntarily, they are agreeing that by 2025, their plastic bags, their food packaging, like this covering bananas, will be fully reusable, recyclable and compostable. Now, these companies account for 80% of the plastic packaging used in UK supermarkets, so the impact could be enormous. Prime Minister Theresa May has promised to eliminate avoidable plastic waste by 2042 as part of a national action plan. The government is ambitious, and it should be, because the threat to the environment is so severe. But this is a global problem, and it needs a global response. When you consider that the amount of plastic we produce each year is equivalent to the entire weight of humanity. It's public concern about plastic waste that is driving the agenda. It's being called the Blue Planet Effect, after the television series by Sir David Attenborough, which has exposed the impact of plastic on our seas and wildlife. And though critics say that this new pact is just voluntary, there's no way of enforcing it, the public is committed to change. We're already seeing people replacing their plastic shopping bags for reusable cloth ones and taking their daily coffee in a reusable cup. They're expecting retailers to commit to change too. Charlie Angela, Al Jazeera, London. Let's bring in our guests now. Joining us on Skype from London, Adrian Mars, a science and technology journalist. In Nairobi, Ali Mwanzi, Deputy Director in Charge of Field Operation at Kenya's National Environment Management Authority. And also on Skype, but from Bergen in Norway, Afro Shah, a 2016 UN Environment Champion of the Earth winner who focuses on pollution in our oceans. Very good to have all three of you with us. Let me start off with you, Adrian Mars, seeing as this happened in your part of the world, this agreement, this pledge to put a stop to plastic, plastic waste. What do you make of it? Well, I, I think a cynic, and perhaps I am one as a journalist, would suggest this is, although definitely a good move and welcomed by environmental groups, um, it's an attempt to avoid stricter government regulation. What they're not doing is promising to reduce the amount of plastics they use, uh, they're trying to avoid um, deposits on, on single-use plastic items uh, by government and other government regulation. Of course, both of those would hit them harder in the pocket than making their plastics recyclable. Uh, there's a lot of government, there's a lot of public pressure on the government uh, to deal with this. They've already um, put a five pence, that's about seven US cents uh, levy on plastic bags from large change of shops. Uh, they're talking about a deposit on plastic bottles, so they're returnable, and uh, banning plastic cotton buds and drinking straws, uh, which, you know, is maybe could be argued tinkering at the edges, but it could get a lot worse for the manufacturers. So I think this is really uh, to some extent laudable, but to some extent an attempt to head off something far, far worse financially. And do you think it'll buy them enough time to 
head off for that inevitable point that they must surely reach at some stage and take that financial hit to do the right thing? I think only time will tell. Of course, there's a very good chance we'll see a change of government before this these targets come in in 2025. So perhaps partly it depends how they do. Um, I think one point is that uh, the, 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 um, the groups have a, a valid point that, in fact, 95 percent of plastic uh, are surveyed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, uh, the uh, woman who set off a, a record for solo navigation around the world in a yacht. Mm. Um, she, a survey by them found that 95 percent of, pla- of single use plastics around the world aren't recycled. So really, I think the environment groups do have a point. We need to get rid of plastics as much as possible, single use plastics at least. Um, and I don't think that pressure is going to go away. It'll help. It'll certainly help. All right, let's talk about this. What Adrian says is a a small step, as he cynically points out. What do you think of it, Afroz Shah? I think it's far too little. (laughs) But I work on the other spectrum, you know, where uh, the narrative which we see in this world is the laws and the policies and the regulation must uh, help us in cleaning the ocean or protecting the ocean from being plastic-filled. I think individuals must own up. You know, the field which I work in, Mumbai, uh, I think we all have littered. We have turned plastic into marine debris. Plastic was not marine debris. Plastic is cost-effective and durable product. It's how we handle plastic. And if you don't recycle and monetize plastic, you are in for trouble. And that's what I see at my beach in Mumbai. Of course, this goes with a caveat that unnecessary single-use plastic have no place in 21st century. And that's what these laws and regulation must drive at. And they must drive it at a faster pace and speed than what's being done now. Uh, marine species are in trouble. The ocean is in trouble. We have lost our beach. Citizens are not able to enjoy their beaches. I can't go for a swim in my beach in Mumbai. Now, what do you expect at this fag end from the lawmakers and the governance module? You know, and I firmly believe it's more these individuals who are littering are responsible. And I, I, I speak purely from my experience, you know. I have picked up 14 million kgs of plastic from a single beach in Mumbai. The UN has labeled this as the biggest beach cleanup. And I, after picking up, I'll tell you it's not the plastic which is the problem. Our empathy towards plastic has got us where we have. Every person who litters must own up. This is because of the loss of sense of belonging. You feel your home is your home, your car is your car, your offices are your office, your family is your, your family. But when it comes to your ocean, your nature, it's not mine. The government must take care. It seems we've become so distant from our environment and things that are important to us. Ali Mwanzi, what do you make of this latest gesture, if I can put it that way? Oh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, Here in Kenya, we are very happy. uh, Speaking from the standpoint of an environmental protection agency, uh, that uh, the implementation of the plastic banner is going to solve one of our biggest problems, and this is the sources of uh, land-based pollution into the marine environment. And therefore, um, we are solving one of the biggest problems into the environment, and we're going to have uh, very much beneficial if, uh, impacts into the society. And uh, I, I think uh, this is the way to go, because we have uh, a lot of alternatives in the pa- packaging uh, uh, environment, and therefore, we are not going to constrain any uh, progressive um, activities by any group of people. And the way to go is uh, we need to stick with the, uh, removing plastic um, materials in the environment so that uh, we can clean our environment for the purposes of uh, clean and healthy environment for all people and the uh, 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 marine, marine life in general. And therefore, I think uh, we are doing the right thing in Kenya and we are very happy. We are okay, let's talk in, about in what's going on ban. in Kenya, if we may. Kenya's looking... ban there. Kenya has imposed the world's stiffest fines on the use of plastic. Pretty draconian, pretty hard for those who rely on plastic for their business. Tell me how it's working. Is it successful? Yeah, we, we, we are saying it's been very successful because... Um, uh, we've seen the environment is choked with the plastic carrier bag, plastic uh, flat bags in Kenya, and uh, our national solid waste strategy has stipulated that we need to take action towards cleaning the environment. 
and uh, it's been uh, a good thing that we deal with the plastic and carrier bar because there are alternatives in the environment which if all of us embrace in the use of the alternative packaging materials or bags, then um, everybody will be uh, very happy about it and we're not going to lose any um, uh, employment opportunities in the industry because we know very well that the manufacturers here will have to tune their machines so that they can embrace the new alternative packaging that is uh, required and people will continue working in the, in, the, in the industries and people will enjoy clean and healthy environment for all. So uh, we're okay, not so, saying that this so is a bad thing. Or the, I can certainly Laconian, understand but it. We you make the an important too. point, sorry, may I jump in here and bring in Adrian? You make an important point when it comes to business, you say that everybody's benefiting from it, but Adrian, as you know, it'll hit businesses hard. The plastic industry obviously won't be behind this. Those who use it to carry fruit and veg in their plastic bags to ferry from one place to another won't be behind it. How do you make this a successful business model? Well, uh, it's, it's down to government pressure and regulation. If the demand is there for different sorts of plastic, um, one of the, the promises that, that is that they're going to increase the amount of compostable plastic, which does, to a great extent, largely solve the problem, but the technology is still very much lagging behind. But um, if we can really crack that problem and, get, and, and use plastics that decay in the environment, then it's almost problem solved overnight. And I think eventually technology will solve it. It's just a question of whether that's five years or 20 years or more to solve that one. One doesn't know how hard the problem is to solve, really, until one solved it. But it's something people have been working on for a long, long time. And, I mean, because it uh, takes 20 years to get rid of a shopping bag, a plastic shopping bag. I mean, that's extraordinary, isn't it? And, and plastic yeah, that is it, reusable, you can only reuse it a certain amount of times as well. There's a finite amount that's of right. times. And yeah. it breaks down into increasingly small pieces that cause increasing problems to marine wildlife because many marine wildlife mistake it for things like fish eggs and uh, other things floating in the sea. They treat as food. So as it breaks down, um, it causes more damage than large whole plastic bags, which are visible and unpleasant. And it actually enters the food chain as well. We consume a large amount of microplastic. And at the moment, nobody knows if that's damaging our health or not. So it is a very, very urgent problem. Shah, it is, it's frightening, isn't it? And I'm, I'm just wondering why it's taking us so long to get to this Point. What is it? Is it the, the pictures of the swirling plastic in the sea? Is it knowing that eating plastic is going to damage us? I mean, what finally triggered this move, this tipping point? Afroz. Even when you, when you see such a huge uh, and a humongous problem facing you, I come from the land of Mahatma Gandhi, so your immediate response is, I, I've followed him all my life. As a lawyer, I did that in the courts in Mumbai. So you want to be a part of the solution. I always tell people up to my mind, you know, you can keep on complaining, you can keep on blaming the governments, you can keep on blaming the policy, but an individual is at the center of the pollution. The governments have not littered, the institutions have not littered. Now you are looking for an institutional solution, saying the big boys and the big girls, the government and the court will step in to protect the environment. I think it should start with a single entity. Every individual I must own up. And I, that requires a lot of effort, you know. I agree, I am we a, should be making I'm a firm individual believer, effort, but I don't think an individual yeah, effort I'm a firm... will solve it. You, you, we haven't seen any environmental problem you're, you're, that's yet you're been Adrian, solved Adrian, by people taking personal responsibility. It all helps. It's but, not saying we shouldn't do it, but, but we do and, need much bigger global things that force people to do it. And some people, of course, don't have the but, incomes to make the but let me, choices let me, that actually cost more. Um, to let, make an environment. Let me share my experience. Okay, Afroz, sorry, working, let's, I, I think know, we have I, a bit I of a sound issue. Afroz, go ahead. I speak from my experience. As I, I, I must uh, answer Adrian, I think. He pitched in saying that individual efforts. I speak purely from my experience. For three years, I have worked. 50, 60,000 people in Mumbai are having a change of heart and mind. You know, we have been told too long that these laws are going to take over our lives. I mean, we have lost connect. The basic is this we have lost connect with the nature. Why do people litter? There's loss of sense of belonging. Every plastic is turned into a marine debris. Ask me the poor people. You know, in Mumbai, I work in the slums, 60,000. There's a change of heart. They're, they're making their houses zero garbage. 
And it was a small, small pep talk to them saying that, can we do it together? This impersonal mechanism of laws, policies, and I speak as a lawyer. I appear in the court every now and then defending government action. I'm a constitutional lawyer at Mumbai High Court. Court orders are passed, laws are put in place, and who sees the implementation and enforcement? Ask me when you see 15 million kgs of plastic at the beach. There's an extended producer's responsibility in my country as I speak to you. There's a solid waste management rules. Okay, but There's isn't an important point rules. as well, and if that? I can put this to Ali, how do Who you balance that? saving the environment um, and possibly not sacrificing our economy? How do you get people to understand that the two can exist, that you can be environmentally friendly, that it can be economically beneficial to you? Yeah, th this is a, a very good question. Uh, I'll start by saying that uh, <clears throat> in, every in every action that we take, uh, we normally find uh, information to support the decision that is being taken, and uh, we normally create awareness to the citizenry so that uh, we can go uh, together with the citizen through that particular path. And therefore, when we decided that we need to ban the plastic, the use of plastic uh, bag in the country, we also found uh, <clears throat> some information about the appropriate um, alternative packaging for all users in Kenya. And therefore, um, and we said that uh, we ha there are appropriate technologies that can be used by the manufacturing industry to be able, again, to sustain, to sustain their businesses. And, self, and therefore, all the decision was supported by information that was there, and we continue to uh, collect more information to support this particular decision, and as well as create awareness to the citizenry about the availability of uh, alternative packaging material, which now uh, goes a long way to guarantee uh, the economy to continue the way it used to to be, and at the same time saving our environment from uh, pollution or choking effect of uh, the plastic carrier and the flat bags. And therefore, these two uh, go hand in hand and is supported by information that is there from science. And uh, we continue to collect uh, more information to support these decisions. And uh, okay. all is uh, Let me put this well to Adrian. So, so Adrian, Everybody there you've got countries happy. like Kenya Everybody's who happy. have been incredibly proactive and they've decided to do something about it. You've got people like Shah, who spend, uh, Afros rather, who spend hours on the beach cleaning up, getting his feet and hands dirty and, and opening himself up to, you know, whatever sort of diseases. And then you have countries, the five Asian countries, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, who are dumping more plastic into oceans than the rest of the world. I mean, does this negate everything that's been done? And how can you rein those sort of countries in? Well, there's no question that... that individual action is valuable. We also have people who voluntarily clean beaches. And although that doesn't solve really the plastic problem at sea, it does improve uh, the local environment for people and for animals that use the beaches. Um, but it's not really a solution. Uh, and until we find, I think, much greater scale, either technical or regulatory solutions, the problem will continue. Um, it's very difficult to see how you can persuade countries. What made the huge difference here was, as your uh, package said, it was uh, a documentary by David Attenborough called Blue Planet that actually showed people what the reality is on the surface of the ocean and under the ocean. And that really, really shocked people. It's incredibly, he's an incredibly popular broadcaster here. And that made more of a difference than years of campaigning and regulation. Um, and suddenly there's a huge call for action. So okay. and it's once not, people, it's not only there is just a willingness when people know the problem to, uh, to have something done. To do something about it. It's not just plastic that's harming the environment. Scientists say so-called healthy foods could also be damaging our planet. They say eating lettuce is over three times worse in greenhouse emissions than eating bacon, for example. That's because lettuce has so few calories that you'd need to eat two whole iceberg lettuce heads to get close to the calorie intake of two rashes of smoked bacon. Almonds are being blamed for water shortages in California, where 82% of the world's almonds are produced. Each one takes nearly four litres of water to produce. And the low-fat, high-protein quinoa is having detrimental effects in the fields of Peru and Bolivia, where it's farmed. The rise in export has made it too expensive 
for locals to buy it. Afros, do you think, you know, this sort of information, plastic falls into that. Do you think it's just overwhelming for people to know that, look, I'm trying to do my best. I've given up plastic water bottles. I'm onto glass now and I'm trying to get fit and quinoa is bad for the, uh, you know, for the planet. I mean, where does one start? See, I'll tell you the whole uh, narrative uh, when you discuss problem of plastic environment. We, as humans, we want solution. Now, if you remove the assumption that solution is in the near future, then things are OK. We, each one of us, I firmly believe, will have to start our personal journey. The problem is we are looking for solution. We have not even understood the problem of plastic in ocean. Why people litter, from where it is coming, why are these buying habits? Why is consumerism promoting this? When you have more pu purchasing power, you get more plastic in your house. You know what I mean? And then you litter. So this whole concept about solution, 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 I think it's too far-fetched at this point of time. What we need is simple, basic things. You will have to teach everybody in the country. I am doing that in Mumbai. Maybe more Afros should stand up everywhere in my country and tell people up, get your life to life of existence, this move away from life of convenience. We want solution, we want convenience. This can't be it all. Our bonds have been snapped. Let me tell you, you know, I'm in Norway now cleaning the beaches here in remote island. Now, Norway is supposed to be a very sustainable country. And uh, mind you, yesterday I was at one of a remote island full of plastic. What do you respond to it? OK, I let me bring in Ali. And I should imagine hearing uh, said, statements no. from Donald Trump's administration, for example, where they seem to be rolling back all the strides made against the environment doesn't help. On a higher level, should plastic pollution, for example, be in the same league as emitting greenhouse gas emissions? Should we be taking it that seriously, getting the clout behind it that it needs? Oh, oh, th oh thank you, thank you. I, uh, I, I tend to believe that this should be put in the same league because uh, uh, the consequences of uh, plastic bags on the environment pose a very big threat to the, <clears throat> to the life of both the humans and uh, marine life and the wild animals as well. And therefore, because uh, the issue of the greenhouse gases into the, um, into, into the environment again also causes uh, similar uh, consequences of uh, impact into the human, uh, I mean, uh, human life. Uh, the same should be debated at the same level so that uh, they are tackled at the same uh, level and uh, consideration of the resources at the same sympathetic level. Uh, what will be different pro pro probably will be uh, the other one will be tackled at the global level because uh, the gases do not have uh, boundaries, but with the pollution, each government needs to put up measures so that they can tackle the issue of plastic bag uh, menace. OK, let me quickly throw the last question to Adrian, if I may. Adrian, if we level. don't tackle this now, if we don't deal with our quinoa addictions and our plastic addictions and whatever else is harming the planet, what are we looking at? Well, I think the point you raised uh, is, is that it's complex. Um, a little while back in the UK, we moved away from glass milk bottles that were uh, returned and washed out to plastic bottles. And the argument was that was reducing CO2 emissions. So environmental issues are incredibly complex and balancing one against the other um, is very, very difficult. I mean, clearly global warming is the greatest threat to the planet, bar none at the moment. But you know, if we destroy the oceans via another means in order to mitigate that, then it's not great. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult to, 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 to balance the two. Um, really, we need to work on them both simultaneously. It can't be either or. And we can all start taking our own steps, can't we? Afroz, Shah, Ali, Wanzi and Adrian Mars, very good to talk to you. Thank you. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, you can go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle, I'll just remind you, at AJ Inside Story. Mine is at Jane Dutton. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.